This is CBS 12 Daily. Right now on Action News, live at midday. Well, it's time now for an early look at some of the stories we'll follow here on NBC. Fox Connecticut Morning News. One local teen is playing a major role in the fight, and he's getting some big recognition for his work. This morning, I'm joined by Avon native Jack Schmidtline. Type 1 diabetes is a disease that affects some 3 million people in this country. Right now, there's no cure for type 1 diabetes, but I'm with a couple of young people who are trying to do something about that. 17-year-old Michelle Smolarski and 7-year-old Jonathan Platt. This week, some 150 children and teenage delegates from all around the world will be on Capitol Hill to advocate for diabetes research. And they're going to be joined by American Idol Season 9 finalist Crystal Bowersox, who is also a diabetic. Tomorrow, I'll be singing a song with the 150 delegates. They're all kids with type 1 diabetes. Kevin Klein joins us now along with Aaron Kowalski from the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. And Aaron also has type 1 diabetes. Thanks so much for being with us this morning. What do you want uh, lawmakers to hear about the importance of funding and research for diabetes? Uh, well, that it's there's still an urgent need. We're there to remind them that the, the need is great, the urgency is great, and that we're on the verge of really a watershed moment in uh, the te developing technology. Meeting Justice, Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor, that was a moment I'll never forget. She told us her story because she was diagnosed at age eight, and she was just so inspiring. Aloha! Hi, my name is Bill. I'm Meg Neves. I'm Avery. Hi, my name is Carrie Morgan. I'm from Hawaii. I'm from Sumner, Illinois. I'm from Ontario, Oregon. I'm from Washington State. I'm from Hardy, Virginia. From Anchorage, Alaska. And I'm from Georgia. And I was diagnosed when I was seven years old. And I was diagnosed when I was 11 years old. 21 months old. Diagnosed at age Each of you has a personal story. One to share about how life has changed as a result of painfully unfortunate circumstances. And fortunately for all of us, Children's Congress provides a platform to tell and share your story. This is what makes the experience of Children's Congress especially compelling for both you and for the members of Congress we will work hard together to reach. I was drawn to this opportunity because it's truly an honor to serve JDRF in any capacity. And of course, I'm grateful to my daughter, Ellie, uh, who's responsible for bringing all of you into our lives. She works so diligently at managing and coping with diabetes without letting it define her. I'd now like to invite Ellie to come up to the stage for a minute. Hi, everybody. Over these few days, I hope you create long-lasting friendships, and I hope you go home more inspired to fight for a cure and a better life. Hi, I'm Jeffrey Brewer. I'm the president and CEO of JDRF. Thank you. And I'm pleased to be here at my first Children's Congress. So thank you all for, for being here, and thank you for what you have done and are going to do on behalf of JDRF and our mission. Uh, like uh, nearly all of you in the room, uh, I'm here because this cause picked me. Uh, it picked me on September 19th, 2002, when my son Sean was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. Sean has actually accompanied me here I won't embarrass him by calling him up on the stage right now, but he's actually accompanied me here to Children's Congress this year. Uh, glad to have him here. Um, sad that he's had to live uh, half of his life now with type 1 diabetes, uh, but it is what spurred me to get involved with this organization. Let me introduce our panel now, and you can learn more from them and see how they are able to succeed and strive and achieve while having type 1 diabetes. First up, you see him there on the right. He is our research MVP, the research director for the Artificial Pancreas Project, Dr. Aaron Kowalski. Dr. Kowalski. <laughs> also on our panel, she is also a doctor. Last year competed in the amazing race. Welcome, Dr. Natalie Strand. <laughs> Ten Olympic medals, five gold, three silver, two bronze. Gary Hall, Jr. Also on our panel, she's a professional golfer. Please welcome Carling Coffing. He is an offensive lineman in the NFL. Please welcome an NFL pro, Kendall Simmons. Hi, my name is Sam. I'm six years old. Kendall Simpson. How does diabetes affect your football? Why did you decide to do the amazing race? How many awards and medals have you won since you were diagnosed with type What precautions do you take to manage your blood sugar on the golf course? We are fortunate to be joined by our JDRF corporate partners. 
These partners play a crucial role. They help to ensure that we can accelerate fundraising for research to help improve the lives of people with type 1 diabetes and ease the burden of living with the disease as we work toward a cure. Thank you to LifeScan, Medtronic, Delta Airlines, Eli Lilly, Ford Motor Company, and Advanced Auto Parts for your generous support and for your continued contributions in helping JDRF to fund type 1 diabetes research. Let's please give another round of applause for the generous support provided by our JDRF corporate partners. young people from all 50 United States, as well as our international delegates. These young people are some of JDRF's best advocates. They will go to Capitol Hill to ask Congress to continue their support for the important work at FDA on the artificial pancreas, and also to remind Congress how critical funding is to accelerate the progress we need for better treatments, prevention, and ultimately a cure for type 1 diabetes. The hearing will uh, come to order. Today, as uh, I've traditionally uh, done with good cause, I'm going to turn uh, the chairman's gavel over to Senator Collins in recognition of her longstanding leadership on behalf of diabetes research, particularly for children, and her truly passionate advocacy for federal support for that research. So without further ado, I give the gavel to my <laughs> dear friend and colleague, the great senator from the state of Maine, Susan Collins. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I very much appreciate the opportunity to hold this hearing to examine what is often a devastating impact that juvenile diabetes has had on an estimated 3 million American children and their families. I also want particularly to welcome our distinguished witnesses and the more than 150 children who have traveled to Washington from every state in the country and from around the world to tell Congress exactly what it's like to have diabetes just how serious it is and why it is so important that we work together to fund the research necessary to find a cure. Leading off our first panel this morning is Academy Award winning actor and longtime JDRF advocate, Kevin Klein. Thank you all for inviting me to appear today uh, with this distinguished panel. Together, JDRF and the federal government have made and will continue to make powerful partners in advancing research to cure, treat, and prevent type 1 diabetes. Many of the world's best diabetes researchers and leading clinician organizations have joined together with JDRF to propose artificial pancreas guidance to the FDA. And the majority of the Senate and the House have urged the FDA to give this proposal immediate consideration. We now need the FDA to act. Parents who are up every night and worrying every day about their children simply cannot afford to wait any longer. 
I'm pleased to uh, report that we are vigorously pursuing research to prevent, treat, and ultimately cure type 1 diabetes and its complications. We look forward to continuing our partnership with the JDRF and our sister federal agencies on research to combat type, di type 1 diabetes and its complications. I would like to thank the committee for the opportunity to discuss the artificial pancreas system at what FDA is doing to assist in the development of these critically needed and potentially life-changing devices. As a person living with type 1 diabetes, I am personally committed and professionally committed to seeing this important novel medical device approved in the U.S. And I just want to go offline here and say, Mr. Klein, I fully support the proposal about issuing guidance, and I believe the FDA will submit guidance for all types of artificial pancreas before December of this year. It is the goal of the agency to provide a clear pathway for manufacturers to provide people with diabetes with innovative, safe, and effective medical devices to treat their disease. Thank you so much for your testimony. Our next panel of witnesses consists of children who know firsthand the burdens of living with diabetes. While we wait for a cure, I hope to see that more technologies are made available for kids like me. One of the delegates here is from Canada and has a kind of insulin pump continuous glucose monitoring system that protects against episodes of hypoglycemia when the patient is ignoring the dropping sugar levels. With this ability to stop insulin delivery when it detects a low blood sugar, this pump could lighten the burden and the worry for me and those around me. It is hard for me to understand how a device like that can be available in a place just over the border from me. I am grateful that Congress passed legislation to renew the special diabetes program last year. This program is central to helping find a cure for type 1 diabetes. The special diabetes program has a lot of research that has led to the artificial pancreas. It is my hope that Congress will continue to support research at NIH, specifically the special diabetes program. I really believe that we will find a cure for type 1 diabetes. I know that Congress and JDRF are doing all that they can to make this possible for kids like me. After participating in clinical research since I was three years old, I can honestly say the closed loop artificial pancreas trial was the most amazing experience of my life and holds so much promise for people living with this disease. Creation of an artificial pancreas is within reach. I know it. I've been a part of it, and I will do all I can to get it into the hands of people living with diabetes. And I hope you will too. It is hard when I go to summer camp or do a sleepover or even go to a friend's house. Too much exercise or not eating all my food can be very dangerous. I think I'm too young to have to worry about all this stuff. <laughs> Managing diabetes is a 24-hour job. We are doing our part to help find a cure by raising money for the JDRF walk. I'm here to ask you to continue to do your part and fund research to find a cure. I know that with your help, we will one day soon have better treatments, the artificial pancreas that we've talked about today, but also ultimately the goal of all of us here, and that is a cure. So I thank you all for coming to Washington for being here with us and for being such great advocates. is the strongest organization in America that is working to find a cure. Today, we are here with the largest international group to ever attend a children's congress. We promise to learn everything we can from this experience. We want to take it home and be the strongest international advocates ever. Still, I'm asking you.